Hello and welcome to SPS Spotlight. I'm your host, Azel Kavan, Chief Communications Officer for Springfield Public Schools. You know, we're all a little bit guilty of it. We get comfortable in our own circles, in our neighborhoods, with our friends, in our activities, just comfortable with the life that we know. And sometimes there's people around us who engage in other activities and we know nothing about it. Well, a group of Central High School students came across that realization at the end of the year last year and decided to do something about it. They realized that there in their very own school, many people were very much unaware of what the religion Islam was all about. So they set on a chart to change that. And welcome to the library here at Central High School. We are joined by the writers and producers of the video that we just talked a little bit about called The Power of an Idea. We are joined by Lucky Nguyen, Seth Rivera, just wave so folks know who you are, Lucky and Seth, Tian Bui, Israel Robinson, and Rambala Abdullah. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? No. How do I pronounce it? Um, Rambila Abdullahi. Rambu. Ram Rambila Abdullahi. Okay, so these are the students who were students in Dr. Mackey's AP English class as juniors. They are now all seniors, and they all had an assignment. The entire class had an assignment after the attacks uh, in Paris to write about um, Islam, and it started with a simple question, who here knows about Islam? And Dr. Mackey says there was one student in her entire class who raised their hand. And so she assigned a project to do a research um, essay, a research paper on Islam, um, chose the top papers. These are the students who were the top performers for that assignment and created this video. So I want to start talking with you students about, first of all, the research assignment. Um, and I will start with you, Lucky, on when you got that assignment, how much did you know about um, Islam? When I first initially got the assignment, I didn't know anything about Islam. So the very first few conversations we had in Dr. Mackey's class, I wasn't able to participate as much. But as we had more conversation, I looked more into Islam, and then I was more able to contribute to the conversations. And um, I guess now I'm going to go down, I'm going to go back and forth. Rambila, I will ask you, after the project has been completed, what or as you went into the project, did you have a vision for what this project would accomplish for the general public outside of your assignment? Um, yeah, at first, just the fact that my whole class was like doing this and like actually having a conversation about it and going in depth about it just made me feel a little like like good about like great about the whole situation that's been going around and then I realized that like we could go further with it because we were all like so passionate about it and I just thought that it would something good would come out of the whole project. Mm -hmm. So Israel, let me ask you. Um, I know one of the, the the goals of the program of the project has been to um, expand the knowledge of others throughout our community. And I know that you guys have, as a group, have presented your your film um, to certain groups. How have you felt about the reception that you've received when folks are watching the film? I've, um, when we hosted our first session with um, at the professional development session at our school, we got great feedback from the teachers, which led to us um, spreading this message out even more because the teachers were informed on things they never knew, knew about. Like when we went through the different interviews throughout the video and kids gave their point of view of what's going on and the teachers being informed on such a thing made them feel like this was much more important to get out so ever since then we've been going from classroom to classroom to spread the message even going to other schools such as high tech to um, get the message out there and we're planning on spreading this message even further great Tian, let me ask you so when you received the assignment you obviously approached it with gusto all of you did I mean it was an AP class and you guys did very well so obviously you're very smart students but um, was there any kind of um, preconceived notion that you went into the assignment with or did you how did you approach your assignment well for the research assignment like lucky said we didn't know anything about it I mean the last time I heard about Islam was in the sixth grade and at that point that was like five years ago so we all wanted to inform people but not have it only as facts because that gets um, I mean, we wanted to appeal to our fellow classmates. To, so to appeal to them, we had to have personal, like, at, 
aspects in the video because if it was just facts, it'd be just like their teacher lecturing right. them. So having Israel be the voice behind it and having student interviews, it kind of made it real for them because mm -hmm. it, it's happening in our school. And right. teachers don't even realize it because they're at the front. They're never in the crowd with right. us. Right. So having that part of it, having students being interviewed, really made it work for our school in general, like, specifically. Right. So, of course, you guys undertook this project last year. There have been a lot of developments in our country since then. Um, and uh, Muslim Islam has been in the forefront, right? It's been talked about politically an awful lot lately. Seth, I'm going to direct this question to you. Do you feel like you are um, in a better position to talk about, um, you know, current events because you've done this project and as a two-part question secondly when you do go and present the film to others how does that make you feel as a presenter well i feel like um we're a lot like better prepared when it goes about what was the question the first, one? the first question is how do you feel you're prepared to talk about current events now because of this project a lot more prepared like lucky like said we didn't really know much like apart from like a few history like segments i didn't know much about islam but with Dr. Mackey and like the help that she gave us, like we were in a short amount of time, we were really highly educated about it. With there's plenty of sources and background knowledge we got to go about it. And then like now when we're showing other people, it's a difference when you're researching something and you're gaining knowledge. But now it's like we have that knowledge and we're just continuing to gain it. So we're we're kind of like the teachers now, you know. Right. Like we can answer questions. We we we're helping adults understand this stuff. And so, and, and I directed this to you, but anybody can, can jump in if you want to add to it. How does that make you feel as you go out and you talk to sometimes your peers, sometimes your teachers, sometimes other adults? Um, you show the film and then maybe there's a question and answer period and you guys are the, the quote unquote experts, you're the panelists. So how does that, how does that, how do you guys feel about that? Really satisfied. Makes us feel like we did something right. Yeah. yeah. It makes you feel like you're going out to help people every day in a good way. How long did it take you to produce the video? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> we the project ended April first, so the pro once the project ended, um, we started the video about like a week, a week and a half later, and yeah. we worked all the way from the video all the way to the end of the year. So yeah. it took a. a Month and a half, probably. Even past, yeah. yeah, a little bit. All the way up to the last school, day of school. And all the interviews and then all the yes. editing yeah. and everything. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your, your morning to meet with me and to tell everybody who's going to view this about your, your film, which is called The Power of an Idea. And please stay tuned because you will see a link um, shortly that will allow you to view the video on your own, but we're also going to air it right now. So thanks for watching. This is 180 Day News. I'm your host, Azel Kavan, here with the filmmakers of The Power of an Idea, Dr. Diane Mackey's junior AP English class last year here at Central High School in the library. In spring 2016, Dr. Mackey's AP English class were research papers on Islamic fundamentalism and how the Muslim community is perceived and treated in the U.S. The project was eye-opening for many of us and we felt that the rest of the central community needed to be involved in a broader conversation about what is going on in the world and how we interact with the Muslim population here in Springfield. We have created this video to start a conversation here at Central. This is the power of an idea. American citizen, you're protected by the rights of the Constitution. I also want to bring in people that have experience in dealing with different cultures. Talk to us and ask us questions. I'm sure we're not going to be afraid to answer. They're very, very good people. People who are meant to do harm prey upon people that are ignorant. To begin a conversation, it is important that we start with a common understanding of what Islam is. In the year 610, while meditating in the cave of Mount Hira at Makkah, the first five verses of the Quran were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad by the Archangel Gabriel. He was 40 years old. For the next 23 years, the Quran was revealed in parts. The Quran summarizes the six basic beliefs and five pillars of Islam. The five pillars of Islam are Shahada, the belief that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The second pillar is Salah, which requires praying five times a day. The third, Zakat, is giving alms to the poor. The fourth, Psalm, 
is fasting in the month of Ramadan from sunrise to sunset. In the fifth, Hajj, which is making the pilgrimage to Mecca if one can afford it. The six major beliefs are the belief that Allah is the one and only God, the belief in the angels, the holy books, the prophets and messengers, the day of judgment, and, and predestination. The prophet was an honest and trustworthy man. He is a role model for all Muslims. A true Muslim follows the examples and good qualities of the prophet. After the death of the prophet, there was a disagreement on who should lead the Muslim community. The two groups, Shia and Sunnis, emerged from this conflict. The Shia believed that only the family line of the prophet should lead the Muslim community, while the Sunnis believe anyone that is capable can lead the Muslim community. The majority of the Muslims are Sunnis. Whether a Muslim is a Sunni or Shia, they must follow the Quran and the way of the prophet in order to be a true Muslim. ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, is a jihadist group based in Iraq. It is also known as ISIL, Daesh, and Islamic State. Emerging from the radical Wahhabi fundamentalist ideology taught in Saudi Arabia, the same ideology that gave rise to Al-Qaeda, the group claims to practice the purest form of Islam. Wahhabi teaching says that society should look exactly as it did in the time of the Prophet, and his followers engage in many practices that modern society rejects as barbaric and medieval. Manipulating verses from the Quran, ISIS and similar fundamentalist jihadist group declare their violence justified. ISIS has declared itself a caliphate, claiming to be the only legitimate successor of the Prophet Muhammad and the leader of all Sunnis. The group's ultimate aspiration is to create a sovereign Islamic state. In order to accomplish the goal, ISIS engages in terrorist attacks both in the Middle East and around the world. Using this tactic works for them in two ways. One. The group will rid the Middle Eastern countries of non-Muslims. In the eyes of ISIS, a utopian territory consists of only Muslims. Harming and killing other Muslims is part of the plan. These groups believe that anyone who is not following their brand of Wahhabi Islam is not a true Muslim, and so can be killed in jihad. The Quran states, whoever kills an innocent person, it is as if he has killed all of humanity. Therefore, ISIS is not an Islamic belief, and they are not Muslims. So they don't represent Islam. Um, they, they don't, don't appreciate the kind of struggles that a lot of us have had to go through, that our parents have had gone through, to immigrate to this country, to escape from all of the different wars and conflicts and corruption that go on. And so I feel that when it steps a certain boundary, you have to say something. The Quran states that a man should not kill in doing so, he breaks one of the tenets of the Islamic faith. ISIS claims to want to restore God's rule and defend Muslims, but they're endangering Muslims all across the world. 2. Large-scale terrorist attacks on Western countries are a flashy display of ISIS's strength. ISIS is gaining massive media attention. Outlets are covering scenes and cases dealing with them every day. Social media is rapidly emerging news feeds about the group, drawing worldwide attention. ISIS gains its followers by the hundreds. Terrorism feeds into this in a couple of ways. Some young Muslims are tricked by an illusion of what ISIS is not and voluntarily seek to join the group. But the terrorism also leads Western countries to alienate and reject Muslim populations living within their borders. This alienation just fosters more frustration and pushes these populations into the arms of the only ones they feel will accept them, the very terrorists responsible for their alienation. ISIS wants to use this new generation that is flocking to its borders to establish its control in the region and create its state. The group ultimately wants to expand its army and to establish a territory which all Muslims around the world will call home. On the way there, the group murders anyone in its path, including Muslims. Breaking one of the fundamental tenets, the group still claims to follow the true Muslim faith, causing uneducated individuals in society to blame Muslims in general for the actions of extremists. We cannot continue to allow people to use the Muslim population as a scapegoat because ISIS is still out there raising havoc. Forging a wall between Western society and the Muslim population doesn't solve anything. By forging the wall, we are creating more paranoia. Many people don't understand the difference between a Wahhabist fundamentalism and a mainstream Muslim. And by alienating all Muslims, we feed right into the terrorist goals. Well, this is because I'm being judged of something Supposedly I am, but I'm not, so, yeah. And um, do you feel safe? 
in Central High School? Yeah, I feel safe in Central High School. What about outside of Central High School? Not that safe. That's not that safe. But I still do feel some sort of safeness as much as I do in school. Every time, like the Paris attack, um, they were, it's just personally being looked like when not, people, I feel like people feel unsafe um, when that happens because sometimes I'm taking the bus like people like look down at me as in like I don't like with stairs you can feel it there like the incident when that bombing that week happened um, even our parents told us not to take um, the bus or like be alone or go outside um, because it was just that you can't even trust people anymore even though you know like people are, um, are not capable of that even though people are scared of the Muslims Muslims are actually trying to be safe themselves, trying to protect themselves, but people just don't realize that. We are the next generation. We have knowledge literally at our fingertips, and it's our responsibility to be educated, to expand our awareness and help these people feel safe and protected within our country's limits. Because yes, that girl wearing the hijab noticed you staring and she noticed how you closed yourself off from her. We've been taught from the beginning to never judge a book by its cover, and yet look at where we are now. In a survey conducted at Central High School, out of 86 responses, only 34 people correctly identified that ISIS is an acronym that means Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And out of 96 answers, only 32.3% said that they discussed current world events in class. It needs to be raised. I yeah. Mean, you, I think you should always try to incorporate what you're learning exactly. to real world activities because it makes it more um, relevant. And, and you know, if the kids know that it's relevant, I believe they'll be more apt to pay attention and actually, you know, get something out of it. Than my soccer team, I could definitely call them my family. And my track team, I can definitely call them my family too because they accept what I am. There were some students who did not want to be identified but wanted their stories told. Here are the stories. This year in math class, I had my gym duffel bag. And there was this kid who called me a terrorist and accused me of having a bomb in it, all because of the way I looked. People say don't judge a book by its cover, and this kid was doing exactly that. He was judging me for how I looked and not for who I was. This kid was my own teammate. Another time, the same student called me a terrorist after school while we were changing. I didn't really say anything to him, but I told myself if he did it the third time, I would tell an administrator. The kid didn't do it again, so I ended up keeping it to myself. I was really hurt from this kid's comment because we were teammates and I didn't expect that from someone that is on my team. In my world history class, we had a sub and there was this kid who repeatedly called me a terrorist. At first, I just let him go for it. But after a while, I couldn't take it anymore, so I told my homeroom teacher. My homeroom teacher told an administrator, the administrator took care of it and put the student in the house. After that, he never did it again. People can't really tell I am a Muslim. So in class and outside of class, when the topic of Islam comes up, I constantly hear terror jokes and bombing jokes. The topic sometimes comes up when a Muslim student with a hijab walks by. Unaware that a Muslim is listening, students carelessly say terrible jokes that anger me because this is my religion they are talking about. Sometimes I would say it's not funny to the jokes, but other times I don't say anything. We need to step out of our comfort zones and start the long avoided discussion about current events and how they affect our community. We must have a connection with the Muslim community, accept them and establish a relationship that will help unite us.
Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of SPS Spotlight. You know, we enjoy a diverse community here in Springfield, and these Central students decided to step outside their comfort zone and learn about something, and in turn, they're educating lots of others too. There's ways that you can do the same thing. Stop by your local library. In our schools, our libraries have lots of information on diverse topics, and also here at Public Access Channels, we bring the community to you with diverse guests from all kinds of backgrounds. So again, my name is Azelle, I'm the Chief Communications Officer for Springfield Public Schools, bringing you this episode of SPS Spotlight, and please stay tuned to this station for more episodes in the future.